Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sunday, January 22nd, uh, 2023. I'm, I'm here with Tim Moody from Pan Global, and I, I asked Tim to, to uh, grace us with his presence and give us a little bit of a tutorial here. Uh, I think the last set of draw results, which was the first set of results on new targets on Escasena, it had some really interesting holes. It didn't have any, you know, there weren't any boomers. There wasn't a lot of stuff that was org grade. Um, there was some disappointment uh, the day it came out. You could see, but you could also see buying starting to come in later. And I think that buying is coming from people that sort of know the model and understand the process. And I, I wanted Tim to give us a bit of a a primer on, on what classic VMS systems look like. And then you think of those being, you know, completely buried and blind and the explorationists on Tim's team drilling based on geophysics and then using the combination of of the core and the geophysics to try to vector in. And I just, one thing that's important to remember is the first two or three slides are going to be kind of the classic VMS model, but understand the pirate belt mineralization is 300 million years old. It's been faulted, it's been folded, it's been uplifted, it's been dropped, it's been, you know, it's been eroded, it's, it's had later cover on top of it like these these things never end up looking like the classic model um you know the model of what they would have looked like during formation we know we know what vms look like because there are in fact active vms all over the place on the on the pacific and atlantic seafloor so we you know the, the classic black smokers off vancouver island that's that is what a vms is like this when it forms that's not what it looks like 300 million years later so the the hard part and it is hard for Pan Global is to unravel what may have happened to it since then, what the current geometry looks like, and use that to try to look for the good stuff once they start drilling. So can you can you kind of walk us through the, the the classic stuff, Tim, and give us a sense of you know what why some of the things that you highlight in the news release are important? Yeah, for sure, Eric, and uh, hello on, on another Sunday chat. <laughs> yes, yes. you seem to end up on Sundays all the time. Yeah. Look, yeah, we put the news out, and uh, uh, look, I had a yes, a mix, mixture of uh, uh, feedback. Uh, some quite encouraged with what we see, and generally people who understand the the VMS model. And I guess to some extent, you know, we were <laughs> we created a rod for our own back with hitting hitting discovery holes in our first holes at La Romana. Um, right. You know, some of these holes, if we were starting from scratch today and we drilled those results, I wonder how he people would perceive them. Um, right. Yeah, that, that you, you would be genuinely encouraged. Uh, yes, no all grade straight away, but that's that's really hard to do with the first hole on, on, on a new target. So, so I just I just wanted to sort of put put that uh, that out there. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit of um, VMS one hundred and one. <laughs> Uh, right. So these, you know, uh, uh, I think as may have said, Eric, uh, these types of deposits, the volcanogenic massive sulfides, as they call them, yeah, they're unique in the sense you can see them on the sea floor forming today. So they can, they're really well studied, and people understand both the metal zonation. They can drill these live systems and see the alteration, etc. So they're really well understood, and then people can then uh, relate. What they find in exploration in ancient deposits and relate them back to these these modern day systems, and that's what we're what we try to do. So, um, and you know, that's, there's there's some there's two different models. This is the classic one, which people often put out there, and it what it shows is the the massive sulfide mound at the top, a bit of with zinc on the on the margins or capping it, with copper at the base, and then uh, and uh, a feeder zone underneath it with the chlorite alteration in the core and then other alteration, lower temperature alteration on the outside. Um, but then, the, you know, in other systems, they can be stacked. You know, you have bulk, uh, where you've got, you know, volcanics or sediments, you know, uh, on the sea floor flooding the, and burying a, a sea mound. And then you've got the system that keeps going and then you get another one forming and, and so on. So anyway, so um, in addition to that, these they can form in sort of uh, on, when the classic models, they form on the sea floor, but the reality is that there is still a lot of variation. Sometimes they actually form below the sea floor, what they call strata bound replacement type 
deposits. So they could be close to the sea floor, or it could be you know a couple hundred, few hundred meters below it as well. It just depends on on what the rocks are passing through, etc. Uh, other times, the classic things they fought them on the sea floor. Uh, and other situations, you might get the massive sulphide forming in very deep water, uh, you know, a long way away from from the volcano. So, you know, again, more variation. But this these were some models that have been put forward to explain the variation in the Iberian pyrite. So, just breaking that modern day uh, um, C VMS deposit model down a bit. So. Typically, as I say, a massive sulfide with zinc on the on the edges, uh, with and copper on the on the on the core, and that's the same in the underlying stringer zone or feeder system that is, or, or what we often refer to as the stockwork that sits underneath the the massive sulfide, which is zoned just the same way as the massive sulfide is the copper core, and um, sometimes, if you're lucky, some zinc on the on the outside. Um, in addition to that, you see alteration. You often hear us refer to you know, different types of alteration. Again, there's very well established mineral patterns um, associated with the, the metal systems. Chlorite uh, in the core of the stockwork, uh, grading out into off what I often get a lower temperature uh, mineral like sericite or something like that. So, um, and I think the useful thing here is that these alteration system patterns can be far more extensive than the actual massive sulfide deposit itself so when you're exploring you try to, you make use of that it gives you a much bigger target when you when you're doing your exploration to then once you've found the alteration you then try to find vectors towards the towards the uh, the, the ore body whether it be at the massive sulfide or in the uh, in the stock work Nice. Okay. So, so just uh, just to sort of summarise that a bit. So you get the often you get the copper stock work coincident with the uh, chloride alteration in the footwall to a to a massive sulphide, um, and, and peripheral to that in the halo to the chlor chlor chloride alteration, you get a sericite zone, and sometimes you get a bit of lead zinc uh, stock work sitting on the margins uh, outboard of that, and then similarly in the massive sulphide above it, copper at the base. Uh, and then uh, zinc and lead at the top or on the margins. So that's that's the really simple model. Um, right. um, but um, yeah, it's it is it's it gives you something to work with. Um, this is a, a sort of a cartoon I put together to try and uh, you know give an idea of where we might be with these the recent drill holes um, in, in relation to one of these sort of. Um, uh, mineral system VMS mineral systems, um, and as you, as you said earlier, uh, Eric, just bear in mind that these this is this is a cartoon trying to simplify the situation. And when in reality, these things can be folded, faulted, uh, you know, really sliced and diced, eroded off, and then buried to make them even harder to find. So. Um, so this this you you try and use the information you get from exploration to to give yourself some idea as to where you might be in the in the BMS system. So um, I've tried to show here this would be in the massive sulphide accumulating here. Some places it doesn't you don't get the massive sulphide sitting at at the sea floor above the the stockwork because it gets eroded off or it slides off or whatever. Um, but anyway, so you get copper rich core. Um, associated with chloride and, and then some zinc and lead um, outboard of that in the stock work as well. And then in the case of uh, some situations, you get these strata bound replacement uh, systems, either deeper or sometimes closer to the sea floor. So if I try and put the, the recent drill holes into some context, you know, uh, uh, um, hole, hole uh, number one here, this would be about the position we think the mineralization we're getting at at uh, La Jarosa and Zarcita, yeah, somewhere probably close to the, yeah, in, not in the core of the, the copper system, um, obviously, uh, but we're we're in the we're in the co the copper part of a of a stock work, and and in both instances, particularly at Zarcita, it's very it's very thick. So 
that's when you say it's encouraging. Yes, we haven't got an all grade interval, but you take a lot of uh, you know exploration interest in the fact that you've got chloride alteration with charcoal pyrite in the in the system over a pretty thick zone. So um, th that's why I say we, we are genuinely encouraged by that. Now, uh, then you've got to try and establish some sort of vector to know which direction do you go to find the good stuff, whether it be in the stock work or the massive sulfide. Um, so um, then if I look at Hornitos, which was more zinc and lead, Again, we've got 60 metres or so with visible sphalerite and galena. We've got some percent levels of it. You know, that's that's not necessarily, that's not the target. But again, what it's telling us is that's probably a pretty healthy system that we're getting you know, sphalerite and galena, zinc and lead, in other words, over such a thickness, um, invisible um, in, in it's, yes, we're probably a little bit further outboard, outbound of the of the good stuff. So, yeah, more right. work to do. Again, in that, um, in both, say, Sarsita, we've got four holes on one fence. You know, it's one, it's one line. One, we've got a two-dimensional view of it with, within uh, a trend that's two and a half kilometres long. Um, it's a similar story at, um, at, at Ornitos, where we've got one hole at the western end of a, uh, of a sort of one and a half or two kilometre long gravity anomaly. Um, and we've got other geophysics yet. So it's very... We've got two holes from one platform, again, one fence of, uh, of, of drill holes. So we've got a lot, yeah, very early days in this, but we take some encouragement that three out of the five targets that we tested, we've hit not only the alteration, but we've hit some mineralization in those systems to tell us these are these are live, these are fertile. But let's, yep. you know, now the detective work begins to try and find, you know, where, where is the ore body if if it if it if it exists at all. Right. And then Lara Mana, you know, yeah, probably say it's either a, you know, a deeper seafloor uh, system or it's yeah, somewhere up closer to the seafloor, but never, it's not a classic VMS deposit, which probably explains why it's a little bit different. It's much cleaner in, in the sense, lower in pyrite, doesn't have all the deleterious minerals, doesn't, it's coarser grain. That's probably something to do with, with its position in the, in the, in the, uh, in the spectrum of VMS deposits. Right. Does that explain it? Does it? Yeah. No, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, I mean that the deeper. Plus, it's just very. I don't know. Laramana is incredibly regular for a, for a VMS. I mean, it's just it seems very. Uh, you know, it's all, it's almost structural. I could certainly see it being partially replacement because it's it's incredibly straight and it's, it's the dip just doesn't. When you drill so far, the dip just doesn't change. It seems to always be the same. Which is kind yeah. of amazing for VMS, really. Yeah, it's very <laughs> because they're they're usually pretty sliced and diced. I mean, it's very, it's very, it seems very unaltered by later structural stuff. Yeah, no, it's very it's the simplicity that's uh, is is the bonus at at uh, at La Romana. Um, all right, so uh, I just yeah. Just thought I'd throw this in there. This is um, Nevis Corvo, which is obviously one of the great VMS deposits in the world. You know, nearly 300 million yeah. tons. Perhaps it is 300 million tons of <clears throat> couple of percent copper. Yeah, phenomenal ore body being mined by by Lundin at the moment. Yeah, it's worth just sort of looking back that yeah, that was it. It was found by drilling a gravity anomaly, and um, hole one, which is just here. This is a cross section. Hole one uh, was quite a deep hole. Um, drilled and they got nothing in it, but they went back and they but they did get geology information and they got rock density information. They they used that not that information to to model the gravity again, and they still couldn't explain the gravity the gravity anomaly. So there was what they call an excess mass that was that they had to put in the in 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 the uh, in the model to try and explain the the where the where the gravity anomaly was coming from so they so they went back and drilled another hole and that's when they hit the massive massive sulfide and uh, yeah much deeper but it it's just an example that your first your first hole doesn't always need to an ore body but you've got a it's a detective right. business and yeah you, you know, you've got to you've got to uh, you've got to be clever about it and use the information that you get from your your first drill holes uh, because 
you know, you can get a lot of very val valuable information and you might be a second or third pass before you actually hit the hit the uh, hit the good stuff right all right um so I, I think Eric you wanted to just sort of know know get a bit of an update on on uh, where we're at at the moment but um right. this I just just to show uh, very quickly we've got yeah, you know, the the blue dots are the drill holes that we put out in the last news release, and right. uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so you can see the Juanitas holes at the western end of this this big gravity feature. We've got no drill holes in this at this stage, and that's where we got the, the lead and zinc. Uh, yeah, the holes at at Zarcita are just on one fence, one line. Yet we've got it's a two and a half kilometer long uh, trend. Yeah, that's twice the strike length of La Romana, and we've only right. got. We've only got one line of holes, so so uh, um, so it's pretty. It's very early days on that. We've got you know another sixteen holes of the current plan to go, and I suspect we'll need more than that. Um, so uh, anyway, um, in, in the last news release, I mentioned that the drilling at La Jarosa, Pilar, and um, and Bravo Norte, uh, we used the, we we had a look at that information, and we were able to draw us stratigraphy you know um across this area there's that blue line is basically where i'll show you a cross section from from north to south through la Jarosa down through pilar um and then we i said that it it looked like um as no um it looked okay. very similar to it so um so this these are two cross section north south cross sections uh, this is the uh, that what we were able to establish from our drilling on the, on Pilar and and La Jarosa and Bravo Norte, but a very similar um, geology sequence to what you see at Asnacoa. This is the open pit, and uh, basically rhyolites in the footwall, and uh, a favourable unit where the mineralisation is, and then and, then, uh, and, and other volcanics in the hang wall. So very similar pattern. To what you see at Asno Koya is what we were able to see at, at La Jarosa. Um, so that's why I said we felt we felt that yeah you know, the the two the drill holes we did at Pilar and uh, and Bravo Norte were most likely in the foot wall to the more perspective the fertile part of the geology. And uh, yeah, we've got a an IP trend that extends about four kilometres uh, from those east and west from the La Jarosa drilling. That gives us uh, another target. Uh, most of that is still undrilled. Okay. All right. So uh, we're, we um, we've got three drill rigs operating today, um, Eric. Uh, yeah. We've got one one at Sarcita, uh, and uh, yeah, continuing to, to drill the you know the twenty hole program that we 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 uh, announced last year. We've got uh, a drill rig drilling the four holes at R Ramana Deep. Uh, we finished the first one. The second hole is just about wrapped up um, now, and then but two more holes on that. And it's a it's a very big target. Um, there's uh, some features up in the north of it that we we haven't got any holes planned in it yet. But we were thinking of doing some further ground geophysics before we we drill 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 in that part of the uh, the anomaly. But um, and then we have another rig uh, drilling now at uh, at La La Ramana, where we're doing a combination. Of some some in, uh, infill holes, we're really targeting where the helicopter EM has shown a conductor peak. Um, then we haven't uh, where, where we think we've got a gap in the drilling. We think we should go and test that and see if we can get some 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 additional high grade within the Laramana deposit. Then we have about okay. five holes five holes that are sort of step outs to the north, uh, looking to extend it, and that we're just following some cross sections where the mineralization looked to be increasing with depth or remained uh, you know um, open so that's where we're at at the moment but you know this okay. year this year we've got you know we we plan we've got provision in the budget for a, another 20,000 meters of of drilling um so we'll can you obviously finish the drilling we've got earmark for those three targets that I just mentioned uh, but we you know, we'll we'll continue to drill uh, yeah, be systematic and somewhat met methodical in our approach as we have been for the last couple of years, and start okay. to some of these other these other targets as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that 
I mean, I think that covers it. I, I mean, I hope it helps for people to see the sort of the classic model. And, it, you know, it looks like the drilling so far has been around the edges of, you know, a couple of potential VMS system. I mean, it looks like the right stuff is just you're not quite right on target. <clears throat> it's worth remembering that with the exception of Zarceta, I guess, or well, parts of Zarceta, where there's some old workings and a couple of spots near Romano's old workings, this stuff is all blind. There is no outcrop whatsoever. So it it is, you know, it's serious work to kind of drill these holes and try to feel your way, base essentially prospect with a drill and feel your way around. And and as as Tim mentioned about the about the Nevis Corvo, I mean, I, I, you know, they're kind of doing the same process where you get you get core, you can measure, you can measure chargeability, you can measure density, and you plunk that back into the model and just keep remodeling and remodeling and remodeling as you go to try to to try to get your model more accurate and improve your vectoring. You know, my my view hasn't changed. Uh, I I think the odds of at least one more discovery, if not more than one, on this project are are very very high. It's just not going to happen in two drill holes. It's going to could take twenty, could take forty, but I, I think I think they'll find at least one other resource here. Personally, it's just there's there's too much stuff that's in the right place with the right density and the right rocks, you know, in the right part of the world, in per deposit model that commonly shows up as multiple deposits because that's just how the MS work. The hot spots move and the the vents move. So you, you get multiple occurrences along trends that get moved around later. But you know every, everything that's happening here speaks to a project where there's potential for multiple ore bodies. That's kind of normal with VMS. It's not that's not unusual. So I mean, I think I think that uh, I think that's a good update. I mean, Tim's going to keep obviously keep us updated as he goes. He's going to be at MIF uh, next weekend to to give us some more to give us some more of this stuff in person. Uh, Pan Global Resources, and, and of course, as as Cheryl's already know, they're fully funded for the program. He just talked about they've got lots of cash. Pan Global PGZ on the venture, uh, PGNRF OTC, uh, great story, really strong management team, great project, lots of money, lots of drill holes, um, and they've already got a discovery. So, I mean, what's not to like? Thanks for coming by, and uh, thanks for doing another Sunday sermon for us there, Tim. Uh, we always seem to end up being Sundays for some reason. Not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, thanks. Thanks, Eric. And see you, see you in a week. Thank you.